So my name is Ian Mwangi. I am the CEO and co-founder of Kicks and Hills. Kicks and Hills is the first future specific e-commerce platform in Africa. We pride ourselves in being the first, the actual very first. Apart from that, I'm, st- I'm also a student at JQuad. So I'm in my third year going to my fourth come um, September. Uh, so myself, I, I, I like to think of myself as an innovative. I like to challenge the status quo. I love changing the normal things. You see, because with Kicks and Hills, for instance, what happened, I, the story rings back to last year, April. Yeah? So what happened, I, I was up country in Moranga. So it was my grandfather's burial. So I, I, I wanted to buy some pair of shoes. From Moranga, it's very difficult to acquire shoes. So I was like, mm. so what do I do? Do I go to Moranga town to look for shoes? I went. So I just decided, you know what, let me just try from these online sellers. So I texted a friend of mine and he took me a number. Yeah. One tango WhatsApp plugs. Yeah. So the guy sent me a number of a guy called Chege. So I asked for photos. Okay, he took me a whole 300, and a whole folder of photos. So I was like, this is so tedious and it's so difficult to choose shoes from. So that is where. That is the that is where Kicks and Hills was born. So I just decided to myself because I'm a developer myself, I'm a programmer. I I, I love coding. I it's my passion. Huh? So I decided let me just do this. Huh? Let me partner up with a friend of mine who's also a developer. We work on an application. So we sat down together. Uh, we decided to develop it. So we worked on the prototype and everything. We released the company. We we, start, we, we now launched the application all the way in November. November fast actually. So we started routing uh, the marketing, we, we partnered with, the, with stores in Nairobi, we partnered with, with, with these people who import shoes, with people from Isili and everything. Now we created a whole mega platform where we have close to 1,300 shoes. So that is what I do, that is, that is my why, that is what gives me purpose each and every day. So. Let me let me let me take you back to where my journey started. So I remember when I was in form two. I was in form two. I I I was uh, I was I was not the kind of guy who I I am not. I was not this kind of guy. I was our my own. I I used to do drugs. I I used to steal. I used to be very defiant in school. So I remember there was a time we were planning a strike back in form two. So what happened? Uh, to Kaitiwa board board of members. So they came to school and they started talking to us. I remember a guy by the name Maina Azimio, still a good friend of mine till date and a very important pillar in my life and in my entrepreneurial journey. So what this guy did, um, he said one thing. He took his phone like this and uh, did this to us. You see this phone, the age we are in right now, it will run the world. So I was like, what, is, what has this guy said? Phones will run the world. So I was not even conversant with IT. I was not conversant with applications, websites, and everything. I just said to myself, okay, you know what? Let me just meet this guy after this. Eh? We get to talk and we see, I, I, I get to see what, what, what the guy meant by that. So after the, 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 the parade, what we did, eh? I, I, I took up a friend of mine called Gitao, Gitao Mbogwa. So we went to the staff room. I told this guy, eh? um, my name is Emil. I, can I have your business card? I, actually, I did not even ask for the business card. I, just, I, I asked him for his contact. So, how can you be a, ah, what's your name? I told him, I'm Mwangi, I'm in Form 2. I loved, what you, I loved how you presented yourself. And he was, he, he was, he was pretty wealthy. He's a, he's a pretty wealthy man. So I was like, what do you do for a living? He told me, I'm in tech. I invest in companies. I have, I'm an investor. So I was like, hmm, an investor. What does an investor do? So I went and did my homework later on. So... The guy gave me his business card. That's the first, my first encounter with a business card. I didn't even know how things happen in business. Eh? So he gave me the card. I was like, this is smart. This is how people operate. Eh? This is so classy. You know, we have a shika number flash. So he gave me the business card, so I kept it. When we went for holiday, I called him. We started talking. He started mentoring me. So I was like, this is the space I want to be in. And... Uh, that, that really changed my life completely. So from that day, what I started doing, I, I bought like a book, a small book. Each and every page I used to write a new idea. Since Form 2, a new idea. Every single day, all the way to Form 4. 
and that book is my guiding light because my dream as a person I want to open 40 companies before I reach 40 so I was like all those all those ideas I have in those book, in my book funny thing let me let me give you a, a funny thing eh? you see Elon Musk there's a company Elon Musk has it's called uh, Solar City I used to have that idea on that was my second idea to build solar solar roofing you see instead of iron sheet eh? you you install solar panels inside the, the the roofing material and you install it in houses and people can have, can have free electricity i was like if elon musk can think the way i did there's no big difference between me and him you see that is one thing i came to really appreciate so that has been my journey my life journey in a nutshell so if i was asked is it wise to take up the entrepreneurial journey i think entrepreneurship is difficult it is really difficult one if i was asked is it worth it i will say definitely worth it let me first start with the why why you should take up the journey because with me it gives me satisfaction it, it it's my passion in as much as it's difficult and it, in as much as i i have more crying days than laughing days I have more as in you see you, you enter into business thinking there's a lot of money you find that there's a lot of you see the way there's a lot of money at the end of the month there's a lot of months at the end of the money because you have a lot of bills you have to pay for rent you have to pay for school fees for some of so some of us pay for their own school fees and everything it's it's quite difficult it's quite difficult so especially when starting up you have to be very resilient and very unafaa kujikausha sana 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 and you have to be very disciplined in how you manage your money so the second the, the problems i have faced in business myself so once i started kicksanils I, I had i had a quite i had quite a huge team i they were about 12 in number imagine having a startup and you're a campus student you have 12 people you've employed all these people need to be paid you need to pay for your operation costs you need to pay for your rent and everything That was the biggest mistake I've ever done in business and it costed me I think six months worth of every, every all the money you've made in six I, I made in six months all of them just went up because I you see I, I, I thought of business from a perspective whereby being big is you see having a lot of stuff is not having a lot of money so I am right now I am I am subscribing to the school of thought whereby It's better to run a business instead of running a startup because when you run a startup you will be like uh one startups use a lot of investors money so you are like I I I don't need a lo- I I need their money to run but when running a business the first thing that comes to your mind when you open a shop palenje right now the first thing that will come to your mind is this I need to make money from day one with a startup you will create an idea you will raise funds and you still have no idea how you'll make money so you see those are two different things and we in africa and having to wait up cuz you see even raising this money is not even it, 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 it's 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 a challenge raising money is a challenge so if i were asked that was the biggest mistake i ever did i i started a startup instead of starting a business right now i'm taking up the new challenge i i changed everything i fired everyone i started all the way from ground zero all the way up So <clears throat> right now Kicks and Nils has about three staff all the way from 12 I cut everyone down people will hate you of course which is that's a drastic move but a very important move we have three staff uh myself as the CEO team as the developer and we have a logistics manager because what we do we have pickup mtani stations whereby we you see in every small town we we partner with shops whereby if you buy a shoe from us you shoe will be dropped there so you go and you pick it up uh and that 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 really changed how we do business that changed a lot of how it even made us how we lay say it it really it 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 made us the company we are right now because right now we we are making quite a lot of money it's we, we, we're turning turnovers of about 300,000 every month which is a good thing for a startup a business in my interactions with a lot of entrepreneurs and a lot of my friends and also the poor mentor there's a question that i was asked where i get where i got my money because kicksanils has a valuation of about 3 million as, as we talk 3 million kenya shillings 
So I started with 1.4 million. So the question I was asked, where did you get the 1.4 million? Because I was just straight up from campus. So I will take you back to, you see, I, I, I told you about a book I wrote of a lot of ideas. Eh? So what happened, in that book I had an idea called DT. So what we do, what, what DT is about, it's about selling Africa abroad. Because there's a concept whereby you see, I have a t-shirt called Hakuna Matata. Right? This, this, is a, this is a slang in Africa. And when you sell it, okay, in Africa we don't even really appreciate Hakuna Matata. But in the US, it's, this is huge. Hakuna Matata is huge. Lion King, have you stitched, have you even, those guys have even patented there. It's, it's copywriting. It, yes, they've trademarked the name Hakuna Matata. You can't use it in any other movie. Because, so I was like, that is from Africa and the, these guys are getting a lot of money from it. Eh? So what I did, I opened my own fashion line. It's called Afrimol. So I, I have friends in the US. So what we did, we partnered with them. We opened a physical shop in the US. So I, 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 took, I took a small package of about 5,000 with these wristbands, head wraps. I sent my first shipment. So it was about 5,000, I remember that day. I went to Karyoko, I bought them for 3,000. Then I was like, I went to DHL. So when I went to DHL, I, these guys told me it's 5,000 to send something less than 0 0.5 kgs. I was like, it's not even a single kg. It's a lot of money. So I went to Kenya, KQ, to Posta Kenya. So I gave them like a package. They told me it's 2K. So I was like, that's fair. But now that is where everything happened. See, I, I gave them, I didn't know. You see, there's value for money. So I gave them my 2K to send the package. So it was en route. That package spent, I think, a whole one and a half months on route. And it, in normal locations, it's supposed to spend about three to five days to reach the US. So that's the first, first setback I had in the business. But once it got there, because my girl was studying, in, the girl was staying in Missouri. There's a school called Winona State University. So when he got the package, he sold it. Then we reinvested that money again. Because the good thing with America, with the, with leveraging the Kenya shilling and the US dollar, profit margins were about 300 to 3,000% per product, which is unreal. So... We, he sent the money back, so I, I, I bought another shipment again. We sent it, then I took up a small loan of about 40,000. We made another, uh, now, now we, we did the clothes, huh? the apparel, Lakuna like Matata, done, done in Africa, and we sent them. So that chain reaction, huh? sending, his, his selling on the other side, I'm making on this side, that's how I raised my money for kicks and heels. And, from that journey, that, that, that happened all before Kicks and Hills came to life. And the, the story is still there. And I, I really, I really, I really, I really think that is what, that is that. Because you see, one thing I came to realize with business, you need money. You, you need money to create money. And there's another thing I came to learn. Making your first million is the hardest. But from making one million to making your second million is as easy as this. Because let me give you an example. Eh? You buy shares. Eh? Shares worth a billion, right? Shares worth a, bil worth a billion of Safaricom. Safaricom, when I bought, I have, I have a few shares in Safaricom. When I bought them, they were 27. Then there was a time late, not actually, eh, late this year, there was a time it was all the way to 44. So that's, that's, a, that's a difference of about 20 shillings for each share, right? Say you have 100 shares. 100 shares, how much money is that? Because you see, making your first million is, that is the hardest. Because me telling you, you will need to sell this phone still you make a million, that is difficult. But if you import phones worth 1 million, it is so easy for you to make another million, you see? So that is the only thing I can advise people to really be vigilant on and persist a lot until you make that first, that first big break. Let me just call it a big break. Till you make that first big break. Because once you have money in your pocket, now Utapata doing these things will be easier. So that, that, that's how I came to raise up money for kicks and heels. And 
So if I was asked to the future of Kicks and Hills, what I want for my company, I would want us to have shoe stores in Nairobi. Because one problem we get a lot of, eh? I want to buy a shoe, but I don't know my true size. So I'm like, do we have a physical shop? Then we're like, no, we don't have a physical shop. You just buy, you can, you can do a return, which is quite tedious. So what we want to do, I want to see Kicks and Hills in every small town, in every small, in every big and small town, and we expand in Africa and abroad, God willing. Uh, so if I was asked to advise anyone who wants to start up a business, here's what I can advise. So it is very much important to sit down and jot down all the ideas you have. That is one. So the first step is to, you need to sit down and you need to take up your pen and your paper, write down every idea you have, do the full depth analysis the problem you're trying to solve, how you're going to solve it, how you're going to make money, so that you can fully understand your business. Because you cannot start a business without understanding the, the intricacies that are involved in the, in, the, in the actual running of the business. So the next thing I will really advise, you need to get a mentor to uh, get someone who can be telling you, you need to do this, you, this is wrong, this is good. You need to hire people because you see from my story, I, me hiring a lot of people was really a big problem. So it worked for me when I, I, I was told, you need to, to, to trim your team, kidogo to kidogo. So I trimmed my team to what it is right now. So the other thing I would really advise, huh? we need to be very, 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 you need to be very cautious about your numbers, how you, how you understand your business. You need to understand what your turnover is, your net profit, your gross profit, how much money you're going to pay your employees, how much money is going to go back to the business, how much money to save. And there's another aspect to it. You can't run a business without actually fully analyzing the bits whereby you need to know what's the customer acquisition cost, how much money are you going to spend to get a new customer, like for us in Kicks and Hills. How much money can we, do we need to spend to get a customer to download our application. That's what we call the customer acquisition cost. And you range it against another figure known as a customer lifetime value. How much money will the customer give you through his whole lifetime as a customer? So understanding your numbers is very important because I remember there was a time Kirubi was having a, an interview and he was asked what is the one thing that he regrets a lot. And he said one thing. Huh? He said, Never studying accounting is what he regrets most because he ends up paying a lot of money for people to count your own money, which that to me does not make sense. It does not, it does not go well with, uh, with, with a personality who's an entrepreneur. So that's one thing you need to understand your numbers. The other thing you need to be a vast reader of books. I do not read a lot of books. I'm not the, the, the heavy reader, but I try my best to read at least a, a book a month. A book a month, two pages a day. Just two pages a day are more than important, just enough. So yes, you need to be very vast because you see, you, knowledge, in the quest of knowledge, you have, to, you have to go through a lot so that you can really understand how things happen. If you need to understand how to invest in the stock exchange, you don't just know how to buy shares naturally. You have to have your whole kajani. You see how, how do you trade shares? How do you buy? Do you go to the companies and tell them I want to buy your shares or do you go to a security broker? You need to really understand these full intricacies of, the, of, of how the life is, is run. So with that, I think I will just leave you with a word of encouragement. You, as, as, as a young entrepreneur, no matter what happens, you need to just push. You need to just push because giving up is never an option and it should never be an option for you. It should, it should never be an option, no matter what happens because in business, it's crazy out here. Don't Because in the first place, we go into business thinking, you know what? Yes, I'll make a lot of money. Yes, there's a lot of money, but before all that, it's, 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 it's a half possibility. It can or cannot. So we need to be very, 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 very persevering. Yes. So with that, thank you very much. Thank you for your time.